table atop a cliff with my left arm extended peering over the precipice. My hand shook violently in the fog as the gray waves half away layers of the sedimentary rock. The line of the horizon was gone. It was blended with horrifyingly majestic swells and tenebrous cumulonimbuses, leaving my existence uncertain of where it began or where it ended. I unrolled my sleeve with hesitation to the cuff, not knowing if I should or should not let it go, but then a gust of wind snapped at my wrist and my heart plummeted into the sea. Empty and ashamed, I ebbed back into my own limbo of hackneyed impulses and vapid lust. At times when dusk kissed dawn behind thin cerulean curtains, that familiar thump would echo in the wind, sending gentle, resounding currents my way. Yet I remained unmoved. Because if my heart had the nerve to continue beating from outside of my chest for some naive sea monkey, then I'd wish that then I'd wish it the best, that cardiovascular bastard. <laughs> All this until one day when pink, purple, and orange peeked through my jealous, my jealousy window and softly pried open the lids to my inner soul. They, they whirled as I reluctantly swirled to my feet in defeat. Then I heard the beat swaying with the sea conch melody of the ocean's vacillation. The indignation went away as white stipples of morning light glimmered on the surface of the liquid amethyst and sapphire. Then the sun ascended heavily from a depth of leaves one could never fathom. With it rose my lost heart. Choking on its palpitations, it spewed, it spewed seawater that fell like tears. And there I was, softened and vulnerable atop of a cliff with my left hand extended. Need to know about you to really know you. I thought about it for some time, 
walked along the fringe of my most inner conscience, ruminating on how to respond to such a question. Return from pilgrimage only to realize that to really know me, I mean to like seriously really know me, you gotta know that I love white chicks. No, really, I straight love white chicks. I know it's like weird on BSU and everything. <laughs> Organic vegan of boots, bleach locks, bay watch, breakfast club, latte, Chinese tattoo, Williamsburg blogging on some Scarlett Johansson fetish shit. I can't get enough of this exotic fruit. Call it reverse yellow fever. Self-hating, anti-Asian, discriminating agent of anything made by Honda, and proud of it. Like I've been conditioned. I remember my first real girlfriend, Kristen. Attention. <laughs> I remember my first real girlfriend, Kristen, high school, as Caucasian as they come, beautiful and patient, loved Tom Petty, would come over every afternoon, afternoon for kick it silver raspberry soda. Shared conversations like we owned the universe. Reread notes we passed each other throughout the day, folded in little triangles, kept warm and close in our back pockets. These flittering moments eventually end up at the dinner table. Being on time uh, to these occasions was one of our household rules, and of course, I abide obediently. Across the table, my father sits, stoically spooning hoisin and hot mustard onto his dish. My father, fifth term Republican, who still whispers words black and Mexican as if they were curses, tells stories of immigrating to this country and describes the deepest discrimination he ever faced was when a Chinese woman, across another table, refuses to sign papers until he learns to speak American. Speechless, we assimilate the silence. On the left, my grandmother is removed from this invocation of remembrances of our family's past. I expect her to interject to protect me and my girlfriend from the gravity of this situation. My father simply writes it off as mere happenstance, says, well, that was in the past, and she couldn't help herself. We live in a different generation now. Grandmother lifts chopsticks to rice bowl, her broken English too ignorant to understand, my diction too proud to explain it in Cantonese. In my family, I wear a yellow suit sewn together by the stories of ancestors, bearing the scars of our stitches on sleeves fray, hear ghost whisper songs of villages fled from bayonets and bullets to illuminated skylines of Hong Kong cityscapes, took everything they could yet left everything they had, grandmother, Fingers cracked from years working as a seamstress who once made our whole family matching pajamas from borrowed fabric. She always told us we looked handsome in our yellow suits. Our yellow skin reminded us of the strength in our stitches. Never called me by my American name. Instead, calls me Golden Sun. But here, in America, I am a surrogate for Crouching Tiger and William Hung. Skin bears stitches when asked where I'm from, but all I feel like doing is ripping out the seams, running down my forearms and up my backside, hoping to tear this thing off. This straight jacket cinched tight around my waist. Strangled breath, heaving chest, gasped and struggled, struggled to rip inches out of the woven fabric, I think. I've got it almost there, almost out, when suddenly, on Pearl Harbor's anniversary, I'm reminded, you bombed us, Goop. When asked whether I teach math or science, whether I speak English, forever foreigner, I too am aghast. Underneath the table, I grab Kristen's hands, intertwine our fingers in hopes of finding solace. This cannot be me. Grandmother recovers and offers Kristen one of her dishes. She glances downward before politely refusing me, too exhausted to let go of her hand, too embarrassed to consider that this refusal is rude. I turn to grandmother, shoot eyes across the table, say, fuck you. I sit the rest of dinner in silence, grip fist the white conscience and continue this way, walking west on beaten pavement, and wait for Curtin's part. Come to the Poetry Slam, seriously. <laughs>had the most honest slam poem and the sweetest slam poem oh, and yeah. melted a lot of hearts today. Yay! 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 Honestly, honestly
honesty is one of those things, right? It's 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 key in poetry. It's key in a lot of things in life, but honesty behind a poem I think is very important. So we liked your poem for its honesty. Um, Milena, we thought you had the strongest, the best use of language and imagery in your poem. It was beautiful. And then finally, you know, a big part of slam poetry is that swagger, is that delivery. So Rashmin, best delivery today. <laughs> When you combine all three of those things and you turn into a transformer, you are like the best overall person. You can come with a message that's sincere, come with a message that's got some depth, come with some message and deliver it well. Oh my blouse. All damn blouse. Oh my blouse behind your blouse. I have to be careful who I say that to. Um, and all. But very memorable stuff, very yeah. good stuff. Okay. I'm excited. And Thanks. remind us again, what is the poetry slam? March first. Woo! Is it Thursday night? Yeah, March first. Be there, be square.